Are you looking into getting into civil engineering without a degree? Well, I recommend you look into civil drafting. It's a job that has low entry requirements to get into the field. It has good career progression or career paths and the salary is not too bad. Just as a disclaimer, this video is about my personal experience and opinions working as a civil drafter and it may or may not relate to you personally. Another thing is that I live in Sydney, Australia, so my answers are kind of specific a bit to Australians, but it may or may not apply overseas as well. So what is a drafter? Well, basically we are engineering professionals that take engineering designs from engineers and turn them into technical drawings that can be used in construction projects. The main software that we actually use is CAD or computer aided design. How I started as a civil drafter. So basically I applied for a bunch of entry level or an apprentice slash cadet roles for civil drafting. I applied directly to a number of large engineering companies, uh, job websites, and I contacted a couple of recruiters. After all that, I managed to get an interview and I was fortunate enough to be able to get an opportunity to start with a fairly large engineering company. In case you're watching, I just wanted to give a shout out to my old CAD manager for giving me all the opportunities in drafting and design and to let you know that that small decision you made has really made a huge impact in my life. So thank you for giving me the chance. Anyways, as a civil drafter, cadet or apprentice in Australia, you will actually need to complete a formal qualification in a diploma of civil construction design, which is essentially, in my opinion, a equivalent of a first year civil engineering degree. You learn the fundamentals of civil engineering and you do a little bit of drafting. Luckily, this qualification was paid for by the company that I worked in. So starting out, I worked about four days um, in the office and I had one day that I could go to TAFE. So TAFE is like college, I think, if you're overseas. All of my days were paid, including the TAFE day. So I worked, so technically I worked four days, but I got paid for five days and one day was study. My starting salary as an apprentice or cadet level or entry level civil drafter was about $45,000 uh, AUD, including superannuation, which meant it was about $40,500 before tax. So for those of you overseas, um, superannuation in Australia is mandatory money that we have to put away for retirement. And that was about 10% of your total salary um, during those years for me. In the early days, I would predominantly work on smaller, simple tasks um, whilst I was still learning how to use CAD properly, reading the engineering drawings, that kind of stuff. So once you get more experience in that, you would slowly be given larger parts of the project to uh, essentially draft. And then eventually you would get your own entire package and then therefore project to draft. You may or may not have people under you as well, but you will generally always work with the engineers directly. So what experience and qualification do you need? Well, for experience, technically I didn't have any experience. I didn't study any engineering when I was in school. And let me explain <laughs> what I mean. So in Australia, the minimum you need to get this kind of role is an equivalent of a year 12 or a year 12 graduation of high school, which is the HSC or high school certificate. In regards to qualifications or technical experience, I did do a beginner's AutoCAD course on uh, learning the basics of CAD, but I think these days you probably won't need to do it. There's a lot of material online that teaches you just that, and I would recommend you learn it online rather than pay for it. So if you are applying for the role that I applied for, you learn everything on the job pretty much. So understanding CAD would be helpful, but it's not necessary. And uh, reading engineering drawings and understand, understanding them is also good, but it's not essential for the role. 
So if you do have those things, it does look better. So if there's a lot of people applying, it is a competitive advantage. But you do need like um, good soft skills. So a key skill that you do need is attention to detail, ability to learn quickly, and good communication skills. So pretty much if you don't have any experience, you need to be able to pick up things quickly on the job. So there's a lot of small things about this role, uh, this job that you would need to know quite quickly, like just how to use the program quick and stuff and be able to quickly learn how to read a engineering drawing. Good attention to detail. Well, basically we create engineering drawings that is used in for construction. So we need to be able to quickly spot any mistakes with the drawings like incorrect spelling, um, any uh, engineering notes that doesn't look right and making sure that the drawings are compliant to the uh, required standards and communication skills. So drafters, we communicate a lot with other drafters, but also we communicate a lot to the engineers. So we continuously uh, talk to them via Teams, we get a lot of emails and of course they're face to face in the office. So I would say this role is about 65% independent work and about 35% uh, communication slash teamwork related. So what pathway does civil drafting lead to? Well, as a civil drafter, you pretty much can branch into many other areas. I had an ex-colleague of mine who was a senior drafter, but is now a senior engineer. He managed to get half of his tuition paid for by the company that we both worked at. And it was such a good opportunity for him that he was being paid a full -time, as a full-time civil drafter, but managed to study as engineering and it was paid 50%. Uh, the benefit of this is um, obviously lower student loans and you get the practical experience on the job, even though it is a bit different drafting and actual engineering. Other people I know that are project managers and models actually came from civil drafting. So it's quite common um, to get into other areas, but they started the civil drafters. But you can also just, you know, start the traditional way for those other roles. But most commonly for drafters is just to keep progressing. So you start as an entry level, which is a cadet or apprentice. Then you just become a civil drafter uh, title wise and then a senior drafter and then a principal drafter and then possibly a team lead or CAD manager. My final thoughts and opinion. If you're a recent school leaver or looking into getting into civil engineering but don't have a degree, I suggest you look into civil drafting. So you'll get a lot of exposure into all the different kinds of roles that the engineers do, modelers do, um, project managers and you, you get paid to learn while studying as well. You learn everything on the job if you're starting as an entry level. You can also branch into other areas like I mentioned earlier, like engineer, uh, to become an engineer or a modeler or designer. And just being in the field makes it easier to get into those other areas. And the company that you are in may pay for those tuitions or degrees that you may want to pursue in further study. So thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you like this kind of video, but I'll see you in my next one. Bye.